I've, I've lived in Girona for the best part of five years now, full time. Uh, there's a lot of reasons that, that myself and my wife, we originally came here. We have two small children and we were looking for somewhere in Europe. You know, we have to live in Europe for our job and, and we're looking for somewhere where I can train. I can, you know, we can feel safe, but also something that when I go away to races or I'm not here, that my family have things to do. They can be involved in the community. And so we researched for a lot of time and, uh, and we ended up coming up, you know, coming up with Girona and once we visited, uh, we never turned back. You know, it was, it was kind of uh, cliched of love at, love at first sight. It's a pretty special climb here because it's, it's tough to explain, but, it, but it's incredibly challenging for, for everybody, from the professional to the person just starting out riding. And I think that it, because it's so challenging, it's that it's kind of something that, that people need to prepare themselves mentally for. And it's a challenge that it, once you achieve it, you, you feel something back from it. How long does it take a pro cyclist to get up there? That is, that is the golden question. Today will not be one of those faster, fastest uh, times, uh, but there are records around, things are up on the, on the internet for sure. Uh, I think they're, they're around 27 to, to 30 minutes is a very competitive time to go up there. Uh, but I've seen people go up there in an hour and a half as well, um, which again shows the, the passion that people have that, that anyone can do it. It just takes uh, quite a bit of willpower. There's a little bridge at the bottom, which is basically the starting point that everyone, uh, that everyone uses. Uh, gradual first, kilometre or so, and then it really starts pinching up uh, probably 14-15% uh, in the corners until you come out onto a plateau. You get a, a brief bit of recovery and then you change again and you start doing basically what would be the, the second or the, the second part of the climb. Most climbs you, you have a steep section and then it kind of slows down or the gradient eases up a little bit and this one I, I always remember there's there's this one part that you think it's about to end and you come around a little corner and you can just see that it just the same thing keeps going and that's a pretty pretty hard mental uh, mental part of the climb then when you think you're nearly at the top you, you kind of plateau and it gets faster and, and you do get your get your breath back a little bit uh, you can start to take in a little bit of the view and then you know you have to get to the to the final tower you know the the final telecommunications tower at the top uh, which is another couple of couple of kilometers which is not as steep but by that time you're you're generally so tired that you know it, it's it's any any gradient's going to be hard You know, in, in, in the history of, of professional cyclists being here, it's kind of that, that test climb in terms of how long it takes them to get up there, how good their condition is, getting ready for Grand Tours. I think it's beautiful in, this, in the sport of cycling that you can, the general public can, can do it too. You know, it's not just uh, I go to a football field and I play a game and the fans can watch. It's at those fans from cycling or they don't even need to be big fans of, of racing, but they just love riding a bike, that they can go and do the same thing that what we can do. I'm lucky enough uh, to be able to do this as a job, uh, but it doesn't mean I can't appreciate where I get to go and what I get to see, you know, and that's part of the things like the climb, like Rocco Cordoba. You get something back as you're doing it. It's not just physical, but it's also the, the views across to the mountains, the views down to the beach. And then obviously the pinnacle of, of reaching, reaching the top is, is something that I think for anybody from the professionals to the amateurs, to the person that's just started riding their bike, you get a feeling of accomplishment when you get to the top there. There's a little bridge at the bottom, which is pinching up uh, probably 14, 15%. Uh, in the corners until you come out onto a plateau. You get a, a brief bit of recovery and then you change again and you start doing basically what would be the, the second or the, the second part of the climb. Most climbs you, 